say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to our outdoor kitchen. You know what? We have decided that we're going to cook outdoors as much as we can. I agree. It's and by the way, Mrs. Farmer, you look ravishing today. Well, thank you. You look pretty nice yourself. As usual. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I actually, well, I didn't shave. You forgot to shave. I did comb my hair once this morning. Well, good. It's summer. It is summer. You know what? And speaking of summer, it's starting to feel like summer. Mm -hmm. It is, finally. It was cold last time we did a show. But, you know, we're up in the 80s now, so we're going to start our summer sizzling series. Most people want to do things quick. You don't want to heat the kitchen up. Right. So we're going to do a lot of grilling. And I got a new toy and I got to play with it. And we created this outdoor area around our pool. Mm -hmm. It's summertime. We got the kids out. We're actually cooking dinner. They're trying to be quiet in the background right now. If you hear any noises, the kids. That's right. They're starving. They're, they're very, very strained. But it is summertime. I feel like, uh, you know, maybe we need some Jimmy Buffett music, Kenny Chesney. Maybe we do. Yeah. Or old school like us, we go back and listen to Beach Boys. Now, a few things that are happening tonight, and we're going to fix some lamb. Yeah. I was at the store, and guess who I ran into today? Who? One of the sweetest people in the world, Jenny Fox. Hmm. Used to be the CEO Remember that of name. KET, and she retired. You've you met her. Yeah. She was starting to talk to me about her, I think it was her nephew, okay. is in Australia. Oh, wow. And she was talking about eating kangaroo meat, and she yeah. was talking about traveling in New Zealand and Australia, and it really got me thinking, maybe we need another trip. Yes, we do. That sounds like a good trip. Take some folks with us. That sounds like a good trip. But New Zealand is one of the most beautiful places in the world, and they have a lot of sheep. They have huge amounts of greenery to sustain a huge sheep population. A lot of times if you go to the store and you look at where your sheep comes from, a, a big portion of it is going to come from New Zealand. Mm -hmm, you're right. But over the last couple years, did you know that Kentucky's sheep and goat Population has gone through the roof. Well, we've helped that. We have helped that. We got them <laughs> right over here. That's all right. And being that you are Greek and you like your Greek food, we're going to have a little Greek um, feel to what we're doing tonight. And we got one snack. There's a little restaurant in Michigan we went to one time. I think it was a chain restaurant. And a lot of times we'll come home and try to recreate something we've had before. Right. So tonight, just for an appetizer, this has nothing to do with our lamb that we're going to have later, but just a little fun and easy, quick appetizer. And you and Kelly were talking about this. So I tell you what, I'm going to let you roll with this. But before we do, let's talk about some jellies and jams that we just happen to have. I right. was speaking the other night in Owensboro mm -hmm. to the nicest bunch of folks I believe I have ever spoken in front of. A bunch of ladies, yeah. A bunch of wonderful ladies. Okay, and somebody named Peg from Peg's Pantry. And this is Peggy Tracy, she's the owner, and she's in Paris, Kentucky. And I've heard about her before from a friend of mine. She left a little basket of Good jams. Stuff. And all kinds of stuff. And we needed I need peach for some this peach recipe. jam right. for this recipe. And she's in Bourbon County. She has her own commercial kitchen, and she produces uh, most of our vegetables and some fruit. And she started in 2013 as a Kentucky Proud member. We're going to have to her. visit with Peg. Yeah, we, we need to do that. We really do. First of all, Peggy, thank you very much. Yeah, Because thank we you. haven't met yet. But uh, we're going to have to talk with her and maybe see how she does things and where you can get her stuff. Because mm -hmm. we like our Kentucky products. Yes, we, we really do. do. Yes, we do. So thank you, Peg's Pantry and Miss Peggy Tracy, and for the peach jam, which we're about to use in this little recipe. That's right. 
So tell us what you're going to do here for our first little grilled snack, Mrs. Right. Farmer. This is just a really simple appetizer because I'm starving and I know it's going to take starving. a while to get. And all you need is a, we have tortilla shells, we have some ham, just we have some thin deli yeah, sliced thin, ham, any kind you want, and some of uh, the brie cheese, right. and we need some peach jam, and that's it. And what we're going to do is take our tortilla and just put a little of the peach jam on it. I'm going to slide that over towards right. you. And I'm glad she had this. Is so, that not nice? Let me smell that it. That smells good. Nice homemade. Oh, that smells so fresh. Let's put a nice I'll big scoop on there. Just gonna chop it up. Oh, that looks like good jam. There's our base. What do you think? So I see where you're going here, Miss Farmer. Yeah. We're gonna make a little roll up. So next, Let's we're gonna lay a little bit of thin deli sliced ham on there. Some Yum. ham. Any kind you want to use? All right. All right, and we have brie cheese here, and Kelly already cut it for me because she's good at that. She cut me some nice thin slices. Yum. And we're gonna take that and put it right in the middle. So that. This basically melts. Yeah, so I'm gonna take it. I could probably do it. Well, I'll do half of another one. What do you think? There you go. And then when we were gonna roll this up. Okay. Let's do this. And we got like a little burrito. What do you think? All right. And we're gonna grill that. We make one yeah. more. Yeah, let's go ahead and make a couple because everybody's gonna want one. So we're gonna put this, this side down to seal it. Yeah. And then we're gonna grill that for a little bit and then we're gonna have us a nice little appetizer. Now, all right, you've had brie, I'm sure, and some sort of jam or jelly along with that. That in itself is fantastic. Oh, yeah. A little bit of meat, a little bit of protein. And that melts. Just gotta have a gotta have an appetizer. But upcoming, you know, we love the fact that throughout Kentucky there are so many people who are now raising sheep and goats and we're doing that. We're raising the sheep and cattle and it's good to know where your stuff comes from. We're gonna have to get Denise from Martin Meadows back on and Jim Mansfield Right. He provides a lot of sheep meat to places around, uh, including our favorite store. Yes, he does. Now, you know, having sheep and raising sheep, they're one of the easiest animals to raise. Just a few things you have to keep in mind, and you've seen on our show, that you have to keep them warm, you have to keep the hoofs clipped, and give them a little series of shots every now and then, and let them have some fresh pasture, maybe a little cracked corn on the side, give them a little snack every now and then. And they're happy. And they're happy, and we're happy. Right. And yes, we do raise sheep for food. We so, got three. So basically, we're going to take these and put them folded side down, mm -hmm. just till we get good grill marks. And we know we're going to have a good hot grill, and we're going to turn those over. We know everything's melted inside. Right, the cheese is nice and gooey. And we gooey. get good grill marks. We know we're there. So Yum. We're gonna fire up the grill. So okay. look, we've already got a wow, and it's rising fast. So we know we got a good hot grill. I'm going to put it right dead center. And this is not going to take long. As you can see, they've already got the grill marks. And I looked, and I could see just a little of the side was open. Everything's already melting. Is inside. it really? I can't wait. We've got us a really hot grill. Lay your Nothing, tortilla right. down. Put your jam down. Yeah. Put your ham. Jam and ham. You could have those pre-made, too. and just We call these jam and ham. Delight. Jam and ham rolls. Oh. All right. These should be ready. Those look amazing. I'm gonna set these right over here. Let them set for just a minute. Let the cheese continue to melt. Oh, wow. look at that. Jam and ham. That's, that's an appetizer. Jam and, ham. jam and ham. All right, I'm ready to try one of these. You ready? Let's see what we got. Oh, oh yeah. Yum. All right. Give this a shot. That jam is delicious. Jam and ham roll-ups. That was really, really good. That brie Those cheese. Are good. It took what? Every bit of five minutes right. to do that? And these are nice like and crunchy. That. I love it. Miss Farmer, you can eat the rest of that? I am going to. Let me tell you what. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. The grill's convenient. Now we're still gonna do the cowboy cook and we're still gonna cook here and there and everywhere. But look how quick. But man oh man. We're gonna pass some of these out, cut these up for the kids, and then we're gonna clean up just a little bit and come back and start our marinade for our lamb. And this is excellent. All right, now sometimes we get to Detroit and Nick and Vic, we call her Victrola, but her name's Victoria, who got engaged on the show. You remember right. that? Yeah, let's, I remember that. Let's look back just for a second at the engagement. All right, you can't look at it because you'll start crying I'll cry, again. that's right. But they're having an argument over here about the best Euro when you're in Detroit. One of them says Lafayette. I think Victrola says Lafayette. Right. And Nick says American 
Coney either Island. Either one of them. Either one of those right. Coney Islands are yummy. There's something about being in downtown Detroit. And the best ever. They are the best. So good food. One thing that you got to get right, and we ate it. What was that other place? That chain restaurant we ate at the the other day when we were up to, when your dad had surgery. Um, Olga's. Olga's. Olga's Kitchen. Right? Olga's Kitchen. You got to have a good tzatziki sauce. Right. That makes it. Now, we're going to do a basic tzatziki sauce here. It's absolutely wonderful. That there's nothing to it. So let's start with about almost a cup of plain Greek yogurt. With the tzatziki sauce, you could use regular dill, or you could use a dry. I like the dry better because you can really get it and mix it up and move it around in there. Let's go a teaspoon and a half. Right. I mean a I'll lot. I want to really color that up. I want to see it. Dill is a subtle flavor, but it's, it's so absolutely wonderful. I'm really going to put quite a bit. And I really want to see the color, and when I smell it, I want to smell mm. the dill in it. Yeah, that itself is fine, isn't it? It's already good. Let me smell it. Oh, yeah. Good. Now, what I want to do is I want to take a lemon and cut it in half. Okay. Uh, what I want is about a, a little over a tablespoon of, of lemon juice, fresh right. squeezed lemon juice. Just one? Yep. All right, if you'll hold that for me. Let's mix that up. Tell you what let's do. Let's use our food processor, and let's take about three cloves of garlic, and let's take our cucumber, let's peel it, seed it, Let's take the cucumber and the garlic and basically put it in the food processor and get it nice and nice and crunched up. Now, while you're doing that, I'm just gonna put a little more dill in here. I wanna make sure we got that dill flavor coming out. Go ahead and let's bring that into the mix. Now, after we get this all done, we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. Oh my, can you smell Yum, that? Yeah, that smells delish. These combination flavors, I don't know who came up with this. Now I'm gonna take some fresh brown black pepper to taste. Take it, let's take some uh, coarse ground sea salt because that's what we've got down here. Let's put that in to taste. Now let's put that in the fridge. All right. Get that set for an hour. It's gonna make sense that that sets for an hour because our lamb is gonna marinate for an hour too. We got a quick marinade. And that's about how long that sets. So this comes together all about the same time. So let's pop that in the fridge. All right, now we're gonna make a marinade. Okay. Now, anytime you, you make a marinade for lamb, there's gotta be garlic. Of course. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some garlic and back again with the dill. We're gonna take some fresh dill this time and we're gonna, I don't know, what'd you call it, a tablespoon? Yeah, probably. Let's put that in there. Let's uh, tell you what, let's put the garlic in the press. Okay. If we use that in the press, that just kind of smashes it up. It really releases all the flavors. First of all, let's take six tablespoons of olive oil because we got a bunch of lamb chops and everybody's hungry. Now let's take about four tablespoons of lemon juice. All right. While you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little fresh cracked black pepper in here. This is to taste, yep. Let's go some salt, obviously. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's put a little more dill in there because I really want that dill to stand out. Right. Now remember we talked earlier about all our fresh stuff we got going on in the background. Isn't it nice just to reach out and say, okay, I just need just a little bit of rosemary. And let's take a little bit of rosemary. We don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way. Dill's gonna be the star in this show. Now, do you want this cut up or just throw it in? Just, let's just chop it up real good, let those flavors out. Just a little bit of oregano, tiny bit of oregano. And this big old honking leaf of basil. Is that good enough? Just kind of going in there for the flavor, right? Yep, that's for the flavor. Now, let's get our little baggie out. Okay. A little more salt. A little more pepper. All right. Get your lamb chops in. Sauce. Either or, like we can throw these in. All right, if you will, mix that around, Mrs. Farmer. And that 
is going in the refrigerator for about an hour, along with our tzatziki sauce. All those Yum. flavors. To time this stuff all out just right, you have your ancient Greek history. Mm -hmm. And this is nice to have a burner, and we have a couple burners out here. We really encourage outdoor cooking. Right. There's something about the whole process, whether you're grilling, big green egg, cowboy cooking, whatever. Having a burner is mighty handy because what are you going to make tonight as a side? You love your starches, and this I do. is an actual Greek recipe. It's a rice dish. It's kind of got a mint flavor, and it's kind of cheesy, too, so we're going to make that. So you're going to make a rice pilaf. Right. And I looked at this a little while ago, and it looks really good. Why don't you give us an overview of this, if you will? All right. What we're going to do first is start with one half cup of butter, which is half actually... Half a cup of butter? Yeah. Okay. Which is actually a stick of butter. That sounds good to me. Then we're going to take a large onion, chop that up, and three garlic cloves. Wait a minute. Where have we seen this before? Onion and butter? That's starting perfect. a recipe? That's right. Wonderful. But we're adding <laughs> garlic, too. Well, that's ah, unusual. That's even better. Three cloves of garlic, and we're going to crush that, and we are going to also cut up two carrots, chop those up, and marinate all that together in the butter. Let's go ahead and cook that all up in the saucepan and saute it till it's nice and tender. Okay. All right, now that that's all nice and... Acquainted. Acquainted, that's a good way that's to put it, sauteed. We're gonna go ahead and put two cups of rice in here, and I used instant rice, yeah, a lot it's easier. quick and easy. We're gonna kind of stir all that around. All right, we're gonna use some fresh mint today, and we're gonna dice that up and use a teaspoon. Salt, pepper, and then add about four and a half to five cups of chicken broth. We, uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to this too, maybe about a tablespoon. And let that all get together and cook it about 15 minutes. So that's gonna work out about perfect. By the time these are marinated, that's ready to go. We start this whole process. I thought there was some cheese in there. Well then after that, right, we're gonna add some cheese at the very end. We got some Romano cheese. We're gonna grate about three quarters of a cup and add that, mix it all, let it sit for five minutes and serve it. Oh man. Sound good? It's Greek night. That's right. Your rice pilaf smells like heaven over does there. Does it? It good. really does. It's firmed up and it's ready to go. So it's cooling. It's gonna sit over there with a, with a uh, towel over top of it. I'm going to start this on the grill. But first, people felt so sorry for you <laughs> when you're chopping onions. So Donnie Mills from Bedford, Kentucky, sent us this little device. It's like starting a mower. It's wonderful. It's just, it, it chops carrots. It, it chops it everything. Carrots, yeah. You just pop your vegetables in there. I don't know where he like got it. it, but you know, you're not have, going to have to cry as that. much anymore. So thank you, Donnie from Bedford, Kentucky. And uh, we could chop carrots and onions tonight. Chop anything. With, yeah. I chop rocks. Handy little item. I'm going to have to figure out where he got that. <laughs> So, the only step left is to put this on the grill. A little I'm salt and pepper on starving. it, and boom, it's ready to go. So let's get the grill fired up, and a little salt and pepper, tzatziki sauce, Yum. rice on the side, and we're good to go. Salt and pepper. Now remember, it's up to you, but we like ours rare. Now you got to find your sweet spot on your grill. You know you're going to have some flare-ups with the olive oil. Let's let this roll. All right, because it's outside, it's our rules. We can pick these up. That sounds we good can to me. Your shoulder. There's a bone in it, so legally, we can pick this up now. You can rub it in all the tzatziki sauce you want. Tell me what you think, Mrs. Farmer. Oh, yum. You like that, don't you? Lamb's one of my favorites. Wow. I love your sauce. I didn't really eat that much lamb until I met you. And your Greek heritage forced me to Eat it more and more. Now I absolutely love it. Yum. Let's try your peel off here. With that cheese melted in there. And the mint, you taste the mint? I taste the mint, I taste the lemon, I taste mm. everything. The onions. Wow. That. Mmm. Now That's I'm pretty supposed good. you know, <laughs> we don't do anything 100%. I'm supposed to be low carb, but I wouldn't break my low carb diet every day for this right here. That's delicious. That whole meal's mm, ter mm, perfect and delicious. Mm, mm, mm. Yum. That's wonderful. Now, 
Folks may notice, and people have been asking why I'm wearing the sling again. The pre-existing condition in my arm, which was a motorcycle wreck 30 right. some years ago, I have a piece of metal in there, I fell, I broke it. It started to heal and the doctor said, go about things slowly. But you don't do that. I forget to do things yeah. slowly. So I kind of broke loose the healing, but good news, we took an x-ray the other day and he said that the healing process is coming along. You just gotta take it I'm easy. I'm back in a, in a removable cast, right. so I have to learn how to take it a little bit easy. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna really try to do that. You need to do that. You know, around the farm, we understand the, the cycle of life. Right. We understand that uh, life is not, it doesn't go on forever. And recently, your younger cousin, Kyle right. Solomon, passed away. So tonight we're gonna dedicate this show to Kyle. And here's a picture when he was younger. And we want to make people aware of prostate cancer. It's deadly, it's horrific, and uh, men, you need to get checked out. You really do, because this 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 can get you. So get checked out. And when you're in the 50-something range, 40, 50-something range, you really need to be checked out. So tonight, this is for Kyle. All right, now recently people have been asking us, are you going to be at the state fair? When are you going right. to show up and do something? We went to the Bluebird. Chef Bill <laughs> is one of those guys who everything he touches food-wise is magic. It's everything. Everything. Everything amazing. he does. So um, we invited our Facebook friends mm -hmm. and, our, and our folks that watch our show over, and we had a bunch of people come out and share dinner with us. That was fun. Here's a picture of a few of the folks that came out to share dinner with us. We had so much fun. We had a book signing across the road. We have true friends. Right. The people that we met and talked to are the finest people. So I'm not going to say we have um, viewers. We have friends. Right. So if you're not our Facebook friend, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, all you got to do is get on there, hit like, and instantly we're friends. And we can talk on If you don't have Facebook, start one up. If you don't know how to do it, get your kids to do it. Or, or probably your grandkids. <laughs> or your true. kindergartners. Yeah. They know how to do it. <laughs> And if you uh, like the recipes we've done tonight and you want to try some of the 85 gazillion recipes we've got out there. Yes, we do. Where would you go, Mrs. Farmer? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. That's where you'd go? Yes, sir. I go all the time. We have literally gazillions, gazillions, Mrs. Farmer. Gazillions. Of big recipes, how-tos, all kinds of stuff on there, how to make this, how right. to make that, how to do this, how to do that. TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. And last week, something special happened. Our first... One million views on one video. Here wow. it is. Here's just a little piece of it. One video that we've done. One million people, way over one million people, have viewed this around the world. After we air the show, we post things to YouTube. Over a million people. That's fascinating. So thank our YouTube viewers from all over the world, all of the United States, British Columbia. We get stuff from. The other day we got something from Greece. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. And you know what? Before this gets any colder and before the light drops any further, it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. I'm really, ready. Really, really good eats. Let's eat the rest of this. To order a cookbook, please call 502 319 0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY, Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.